Greetings everyone, Melissa here. I'm going to give you an overview of my process for creating micro lectures. Now, just a few caveats. First, this is my process. It doesn't make it perfect. It doesn't make it better or worse than anybody else's. It's just my process. So as always, take what's valuable and leave the rest. Second, it's important to know that this is a work in progress. So my process didn't always look like this. It used to be a little bit more clunky, a lot less streamlined. This is the process you're going to see after I've been developing it for several years. Does this mean this will always be my process? It's unlikely that that will be the case, but this is a snapshot in time. So let's go ahead and get started. What you're going to see here is my script. Now I develop all my content outside my learning management system for a variety of reasons. First and foremost, because I want to ensure that all of my content is accessible by my students. Building it outside of my learning management system in things like a Google Doc or Microsoft Word will help me check for accessibility. Two, this also helps me whenever my learning management system changes or upgrades. I don't have to worry about losing my content or my formatting. Three, I also like to build outside my LMS and into systems like Microsoft Word Online or Google Docs that are linked to a cloud and save automatically. The content you create takes a very long time. And if you're building inside the learning management system, it's possible that you'll lose internet connection, that you'll get timed out, and you'll lose all of that content you've been working on. If you use one of these systems that saves automatically, you don't have to worry about that. So I've opted here to use Google Docs, but again, you can always use Microsoft Online if you have that platform. So here is my script. What I do is I know that I have to deliver materials on a certain topic. So I'll sit down and I'll start writing about everything I want to deliver about that topic. Now, obviously, we all know a lot about the subjects that we're experts in, and you can see that this particular topic, I've generated 10 single space pages. Of course, I cannot create a micro lecture that will cover 10 single space pages. I know this is too much information that I'll need to break it up into separate micro lectures in order to really facilitate this entire topic. So it's really just a brain dump. I like to write my scripts the way I talk. The reason why I write out a script is because one, I will use that script when I'm creating my actual artifact, and two, I will upload this script to Screencast-O-Matic to create captions for my videos. So it's a lot of work up front, but it saves me so much time when I'm developing the micro lectures and when I'm adding captions. So here's my script and I have all my pages ready to go and I'm feeling really good about where this is. So I'm going to take my script and I'm going to develop into a micro lecture. So I'm using the Canva platform to do that. You could also use any other presentation software such as Google Slides or Microsoft PowerPoint, whatever you're more comfortable and familiar with. So I'm going to use Canva and what you're going to see here is I've created title slides and body slides. So in the body slides, you're going to see my notes. And what I've done is I've taken those parts of the script and I've copied them into the notes. And I do that again for a variety of reasons. One, because it will inform what I put on the slide itself. One of the worst things you can do is try to create this presentation first and then reverse engineer the script and the content. The content always should go first and the presentation of the content should go second. I know I always, quote, try to save myself some time, unquote, by not doing it that way, but the reality is, is it always takes much longer. I end up changing the slides 30 times because they're not really capturing what I want to say, and that's because I haven't written what I want to say. So you want to make sure that you're doing script first, talking points first, and then the presentation. So I've added all my notes to this, and I know that it's just way too long. Then I have to look for natural breaking points. So the first thing I tackle in this particular presentation are common questions people have about the topic. That's a great way to start off a micro lecture series, is to just to talk about and talk through questions people might have. What you'll notice is I have 49 slides. Again, way too many slides for a micro lecture. But rather than having four or five separate files with all this information, I just prefer to keep it in one long presentation. That way I can find it all and it's very easy for me to manage. And as I'm plugging in my script, I don't have to be flipping between 40 different files to find it. So it's all one long file. You'll notice that I have here, this is my title slide, and here is my ending slide. Again, title slide and ending slide. They're very easy to pick out. So what you can see 
is my second version of this is types of rubrics. If I go down here, here's drafting rubrics. And then finally, evaluating rubrics. So again, you're looking for those natural places where your topic shifts slightly. So any of those subtopics that you're going to cover in the process of covering this huge topic, these all then become my micro lecture. Next, let's go up to here where you're going to present the information. You're going to click on present and in Canva, you're going to use presenter view and I'll show you why in a second. Once you hit presenter view, you're going to hit present and you're going to end up with two different windows. This is your audience window. Now I'm using Screencast-O-Matic to shoot this process video. So I can't also show you how to use Screencast-O-Matic while I'm using Screencast-O-Matic. I know that that's very meta. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take this audience window that's covering up all my great slides here and I'm going to shrink it down. And then I'm going to take this, my presenter view, and I'm going to move it over here so I can see my script as I'm presenting my slides. And so this will have the Screencast-O-Matic. I'll capture just this little box. And over here, I'll have all of my notes and I'll be able to read and hit next and it will move to the next slide for me there. When I'm done recording, I'll hit stop recording and it will take me back to my presentation. Now, for Screencast-O-Matic, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually upload it to my Screencast-O-Matic cloud. Now, just FYI, the Screencast-O-Matic cloud does come with the pro version, so it is the paid version. You will have to pay to get that cloud storage. I personally think it's worth it, but if you don't want to use that, you can use any other video saving platform like YouTube or Vimeo or whatever it is you prefer. When I save it to Screencast-O-Matic, what I'm going to be able to do now is I'm going to be able to share it. So I go under Video Details and I click my Share button up here. I can either do a direct link and then I copy that over um, and then paste that into my class or more preferably, I'll come down here, I'll hit um, my responsive view. This will shrink and grow the page depending on the window. I'll hit captions and controls and then I'll copy the code and just paste that into my learning management system. So that's a brief overview of how I do it. Again, lots of other ways to do it, but this is my process and I wanted to make sure you all had a sneak peek behind my creation curtain. I thank you all so much for joining me and happy course creation.